Marsh. Here is a large area of Menhaden. As you can see, they're pulling mud behind them. The edges, the color is along the edge of the mud line. The plane below directing the purse boats. So we end up down tied from them or up tied from them and set back down tied with the tide. You move his steamer in position to uh, run the pogies uh, if they have a tendency to back away from the first boats, which most of the time they do. As you can see, he's moving his steamer around now in position. Look closer to the edge of the bud as you see the color start pushing away from the purse boats. Many instances, the steamer is not used. Once he opens the purse boats up and starts out at an angle away from the fish, uh, they have a tendency to outrun the purse boats. This happens in many cases, in it, even if you're using the steamer. Right here, he'll kick the steamer ahead now, and you'll see the reaction of the fish to the steamer once he starts in with the steamer. You'll see the color start re backing up from the steamer and back into the net. The steamer would have actually been much better off in any case if he would have been able to come head on onto the purse boats as you'll see in the later footage of course this right here is effective also as you see the back of the net when the fish ran from him if the fish would have acted differently if they wouldn't have backed up from the steamer readily uh, he wouldn't have been able he wouldn't have been in a position to uh, to run the boat Again, this is an exceptionally large area of fish, and we're not seeing this as often as it may appear on this footage. As you can see, the steamer is now shut his engines down, preventing them to uh, keep them off the back of the net. Looking close in the center of the color here, you can see the whips, what we call whips. Many of the captains, when you start seeing them like this, they'll uh, refer to it as brick bats. Again, this is a large area of Menhaden, uh, very tight, we call it as far as uh, Again, out of six months, you're looking at a couple of three days, or maybe a week or two in the season that you'll have this type of fishing. This set of first boats is trying to get out and head in the front of the, of the fish as they move to the west. He'll get in position where the best part of the fish are located at, turn in toward his steamer. 
again, his steamer has to be moved as we go in order to stay in position for the, to run the fish. Again, if he doesn't, at this point right here, he's got to come around to his port or to his left in order to line up with his steamer. In many cases, though, they don't allow you the time or the convenience to, uh, to get in position. Many times when you are in position, as you can see, he turned to his port that lined him up with his steamer now. As you notice, he's still going forward, but he's not getting any closer to him. They're running from the first boats as fast as the boats are coming forward. At this point, he'll tell his boats to open up when he gets in a position where probably a steamer length or so away from the fish. That also depends on the movement away from the first boats. As you can see, he's opening his first boats here. The wall, you can see the solid wall out in front. That's the direction that the pogies are, or the menhaden are running at the present time. And you watch the reaction to them, to the steamer. The steamer's in the ideal position to, to turn them back in toward the net. To, Again, coming head on to the net. He's too close here in actuality, so he has to back down on his steamer and twist it sideways, but the fish react to that also. Many cases, they don't react that way to the steamer. You'll see colors that will completely, what we call, run over the steamer. They just go all the way under the steamer or around the steamer on both sides and react more to the purse boats than they do the steamers. First boats together there, he'll drop about a 1,200 pound weight. Here again, the steamer is coming in from offshore, head on onto the nets, which is what we try to do most of the time, fish allowing us to. Many times the fish dictate how you're going to set. Ordinarily you try to set with the tide. Again, they dictate which way you're going to end up setting though in many cases. As far back as he is now, you can see the fish is not reacting to him the way they do in many cases. And he's still got a large area outside of his boats. Fish again, backing up from his first boat, right along in this area here. He'll get his steamer in position. He's got his steamer in position. He'll start coming ahead on it uh, after he opens his first boats up. In many cases, they let the first boats get out of ways in order for the net to settle to the bottom. At this point here, the fish started backing up from the steamer versus the direction they were going momentarily before. Backing the steamer down in order to stay away from his first boat. 
little longer net than he was expecting, so he got a little closer than, than he should have in that case. That being about 100 foot deep, most of the time they were fishing in water uh, 10, 15, or 20 foot deep. As you see, the slack in the net and the color in it is what the fish are. That's, that's the fish hitting the net. Here you've got two sets of purse boats trying to get in position to set on the same place of shed. One of them being spot of protein, other brand X as we call them in many cases are uh, Burton boats. At this point, it appears he's going to set on the inshore edge of the fish, and we take the out, outside area of it. As uh, our boat comes around, though, he realizes he's not able to set on it and turns off of it. And you see in a moment that if he were to shut his purse boats down here, he would have caught much larger area of a, a fish than, than our boat. Instead of making a decision to open right here, he makes a decision to pull off to his port. As you see the flash out in front of the purse boats there, that's uh, how tight the fish are actually pushing each other. Again, you'll see what a negative effect the steamer has on this particular area as he comes in toward them there. Again, he's coming in at an angle though versus if he would have been out in front of the net as the boat is off of the captain boat wing there, bow of the captain boat. Although an extremely large catch was was uh, caught on this set, as you see, they're much thicker between their purse boats now and the steamer. If his steamer, his purse boats were still been in position, he would have caught that area between the two boats. We try to look at that any time we make a set where another boat is sitting on a large place of fish, or trying to uh, let them push them up like that. Looking back into our fleet, it's working off Oyster Bayou this particular day. Shot here of Oyster Bayou and inlets coming out of uh, Oyster Bayou. Area. Many of the planes fly 